Alright, this is Doc Apocalypse. We're going to be doing a tutorial today on a field expedient traction splint. And this is one of the things that we'll be teaching in the Prepper Med course. Turn you around here so you can see some of our materials. Alright, you need two sticks, and I'll explain the length on those in just a minute. Something to pad under the arm and under the groin with. A uh, rope or something to tie, to actually tie the traction splint to your patient's body. Another stick to twist with. Got right here a cross stick or cross member, whichever you prefer, and of course a willing patient. Alright, let me get this put together and we'll come back to that. Alright, this is Doc Apocalypse again. We're done assembling and putting the traction splint onto the patient. Um, here goes a little bit better view. There's our willing patient. Uh, he became a little bit less willing once we started putting it all in place. You can see right here. This right, this stick is actually going to want to be a little bit more snug up underneath their arm. Just kind of was a stick I grabbed out of my backyard. So, you know, we're working with what we got. And you see here, we want to pad this because there is going to be some pressure right here once you start actually applying traction. Okay, so pad that. We just have a little piece of Curlix in here. And that should be good enough to, to pad. In here, all these straps are doing is just holding the splint in place. So we're going to want to, um, 550 cord might be okay right here. I'd still prefer to use something a little bit more thick. But, again, all this is doing is basically holding the splint in place. You're going to do the same thing with the groin area. It needs to be a notch stick. It needs to be able to fit around their groin. It needs to have some padding there. And then we're going to put it above and below so really we'd want to have another piece here this is just for demo purposes you want to have another one not on his joint but above and below the injury and this is the area we're going to be looking at with a, with a splint like this usually okay. down here a couple more ties to hold it in place and then this here is the meat and potatoes of the whole thing is the uh, the actual part that's going to be putting the traction on uh, again, we wouldn't want to use paracord for this. This is just what I had available at the time, just kind of a last minute deal. You want to use something that's about an inch or so in thickness would be would be best, or in width rather. And then right here is the actual part that's going to be putting traction on there, attached to the patient's foot. Uh, probably best to put it around the ankle and the foot kind of coming up here and then down through this area here is where we're actually going to be applying uh, the, the traction with our uh, stick here. Alright, now we're actually going to start applying some traction here. All I'm doing is I'm taking my stick. It needs to be small enough to actually be able to work with, but you want to have a good enough thickness to uh, to be able to have it to hold up to the pressure that it's going to be under. Right. And I'm just going to lace it in there through my strings. And we're going to start twisting similar to what we did with the tourniquet. And he should be feeling it start pulling on him now. Cole, can you feel it pulling on you? No. You can't feel it pulling on you yet? Now I can. Yeah, now we can, he says. I, I can tell because it's actually starting to move. And we're just going to keep doing this until, uh, again, this is not going to feel good. All right, the, if you're familiar at all with uh, a broken femur or anything, you know that the, that bone is under so much pressure from the muscles it wants to kind of cross over itself. So you're going to be able to see this, the injured leg is probably going to be a little bit shorter than the non-injured leg. So that's what we're looking for here. We're going to twist until it's about as long or maybe just a hair longer than the uh, non-injured leg. And that's all the twisting I'm going to do on this, just kind of for his comfort. He's already uh, reluctant enough to be daddy's little guinea pig. Uh, so it would help uh, having both hands free. Uh, only have the one but you can kind of see I have some excess string off to the side here where my thumb is uh, so what I would do is I would go ahead and 
we've been twisting this way so it wants to come undone this way. I'd want to come over the top of my stick, lash that over so that way it stays into place. So once that's done, you just tie it off to your cross member here and the traction should stay in place. You want to check it, make sure it hasn't loosened up or anything. And if it does, your patient will let you know because it will not feel good. But you just need to keep checking on it and uh, it should be good. You want to check with any kind of splint, disc or pulse, or just pulse further away from the heart before and after traction, before and after splinting of any kind, just to uh, make sure there is still blood flow getting through that limb so he would check right here kind of hard to do with this cowboy boots on two fingers do not use your thumb your thumb will give you a false pulse so two fingers if you need two three you may have to push down fairly hard and you'd be able to feel about where where his pulse is ideally they're not going to have shoes on when you're doing this either so it's kind of hard to tell again with the cowboy boots but just check for the pulse and that is uh Kind of the quick version on how to do a traction splint. It's not comfortable, but I promise you they're already in enough pain having that femur fracture, so yeah, just expect them to not really appreciate what you're doing at the time. Uh, but it will keep them from ending up being a cripple, if not losing the leg. Also, bones don't break clean, they broke sharp, so you're running the risk, the longer that that bone goes uncontrolled, you're running the risk of uh, severing that artery too, which opens up a whole new world of problems. So they're not going to appreciate it at the time, but this is possibly going to save their life. It will definitely save some quality of life for them after it's done. This is Doc Apocalypse, and thank you for watching Prepper Med.